Most mobile apps work with some kind of API-based architecture. This video is brought to you by Pies Academy. So now in our app, we're going to integrate the Internet Chuck Norris database into the app. And this database has its own API. If you want more information about the API, you can view it at icndb.com slash API. This page gives you the instructions for the API, and we actually can test the API just by making a call within our web browser. So this will fetch a random joke. I'm just gonna copy this into the browser and paste. And here you can see what's returned by the API. And this is in JSON format. So we have sets of key value pairs. The type is success. The value includes the joke. It has a joke ID of 403, and then the joke itself, Chuck Norris crossed the road. No one has ever dared question his motives. And then we have a categories array, which appears empty here. So that's what we're gonna get back from the API and what we're gonna have to parse in order to make this work. So let's go ahead and just copy this address here. We're gonna need that in a moment. And let's build in here some script tags where we're gonna write our code. So what needs to happen here is when the get joke button is pushed, we're gonna to need to detect that and then contact the API. So we'll need a window onload event to make sure that everything within the app has loaded before we start attaching to the button the actual action. So we can get the button with document get element by ID and it's called btn get joke. And we're gonna use add event listener. We're listening for a click event. We're gonna call the get joke function. And the last argument is false. So the get joke function is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting. It's going to set up the connection to the URL, which remember is, oops, I actually erased it. Let's grab it again. Right here. So it's gonna make the connection. It's going to get the actual JSON back, parse the JSON, and then display a result to the user. And that result is gonna be displayed here in the joke div. So let's go ahead and set up our XML HTTP request object. I'm gonna make a global XML HTTP variable and then var XML HTTP. We'll instantiate a new object. And then you'll remember we need to set up a couple of things about the object. The first is the on ready state change callback function, which handles the data coming back from the API. And we'll call that display joke. We have to have a couple of additional methods. One to open the connection. This has three arguments. The first is going to be the protocol we're gonna use, which is get we're going to have the URL, which I'll create the variable here in a second. And the last argument will make true to have this connection be asynchronous. You're almost always gonna want that to be true. There are certain circumstances where you might not. And there we go. So we'll put the URL here in the string. And now as soon as we call XML HTTP.send, the device is going to contact this URL. Now you'll remember this URL is gonna return some JSON. So let's get that far and then we're gonna test in our browser. So this is gonna be display joke, our callback or delegate function. And since the ready state changes several times from zero to one to two to three to four, we're gonna to wanna to test it 
and make sure that the ready state is four. And we're also going to want to test the XML HTTP status to make sure that's 200, which is the HTTP protocol value for OK. Just like 404 is a not found, 200 is OK. If we get both of these values, we know the communication has occurred and the communication has been uh, correct. We've got some confidence because we've got a ready state of four and a status of OK. Now, all I'm going to do at this point is console log out so we can see it. The XML HTTP dot response text. The response text is what's come back from the server. So this should be a text version of the actual JSON that comes back. Let's give it a try here. So there's our button. Let's get our console going here and press the button. Oh, looks like we've got an error on 68. If XML HTTP dot ready state equals equals four, it doesn't like that. And I see my mistake. I redeclared the XML HTTP object there. All right, this should work now. Let's again hit the lightning bolt and we'll bring on our developers tools. And let's try get joke. And there's our joke down there in the console. So that's working so far. Now, this is a string. We've got to parse this and make it into a JSON object. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and put this in a variable called response. And then we can parse it. So we'll say response equals JSON dot parse. See how easy this is? Response. So remember the basics here, right side of the assignment operators evaluated first. So response, that string is parsed into a JSON object and then reassigned to response. So now if we look at what's come back, it's going to look different. Let's go back to our browser and let's take a look. So we'll go ahead and refresh. We'll click get joke again. And now what's come back is an object. And notice how easily we can parse this object. And to get to the actual joke, we go in through value and then to joke. So we should be able to emulate this in our actual code. So let's type response dot value dot joke. Let's see what we get now. Go ahead and go back to our browser. And there's the actual joke. So we've accessed that by digging through the JSON. All right, so now instead of console logging this out, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in our joke div. So document get element by ID. Joke, which is the name of the div where we're going to put the response. And we're going to set the inner HTML to let's go ahead and wrap that in an H1 attribute. So this way it'll display as a heading. So it'll be uh, fairly big and bold. And we'll go ahead and save. All right. And that's pretty much all we have to do except test. Let's refresh. Let's click our get joke and there we go. Now, if I click get joke again, we get a new joke. So that works perfectly well. Now, the last thing we're going to want to do is test on an actual device. All right. So here you can see, I've got the phone gap desktop app up on the left and you can see my screen on my iPhone on the right. Looks like the server address on the iPhone is correct. So I'll click the connect or I'll press connect rather. And that should load up our app. There we go. Connecting. So it should take just a second and we should see the Chuck Norris joke app. And now I'll press the get joke button. And there's our joke. 
So we've tested now on the desktop and on the device, and we have a working app.